Are you ready to receive the word of the Lord? Yes? Very well. Glory to God. In this occasion, our brother Geronimo is going to bring the word. If you can come, and we are going to be paying attention to what the Lord wants to say to us in this hour. Amen? Amen, brethren. May God keep blessing you. It's a joy and happiness to be able to be here in the family of God. As the word says, we are the family of God. So, brethren, I wanted to take this opportunity also to thank the pastor, Emanolo, and his family also. How good they have received to us all these days and all the church. How we really feel as in our own congregation that we were a past, uh, pastors for a long time in Uruguay, and now they were uh, connected, that they were going to be online you know, later on uh, to see this preaching later. The subject that I want to speak to you today about is a subject that the Lord has called me to speak about it for a long, for many years, and I want to share it with you today also. If I ask you today, this evening, uh, to uh, what did God call each one of us to do what? Maybe you would say, I have the calling of playing guitar. Another one could say, I have the calling of preaching. Another can say, they, I have the calling of worshiping. Others or some sisters could say, I have the calling to teach the word of God to the kids. And there are different kinds of callings, but there is a calling that I believe that is the highest calling that has to do between man and man, and is the calling to holiness, the calling to holiness. And for this, we are going to go to First Peter, First Peter chapter 1, Verse 15, First Peter 1, 15 and 16. I believe that the greatest calling that each one of the believers have is the calling to holiness. Why? Because God is holy. God is holy. We are going to see farther ahead in Isaiah chapter 6. We are going to see it later on. When the angels praise God, they say continuously, Holy, holy, holy. And God in his word teaches us what is the reason, what is the reason by which he also uh, calls us to be happy. And First Peter one first Peter 1 15 but like the one like the holy one who called you be holy yourselves also in all your behavior but like the holy one who called you be holy yourselves also in all your behavior so I believe that the highest calling for each one of the believers is the calling to holiness is the calling to living holiness and in all our behavior that the holiness of God in our God uh, fills all the areas in our lives uh, from what we look in TV or how we, we dress or how we uh, speak. It says, be holy in yourselves in all your behavior. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If one would ask the Lord, why do I have to be holy? The answer of God would be very easy. Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. For years we sang, I don't know if you sing it here, there is an old hymn that says, Holy, 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 Lord Almighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. How many know that uh, hymn? Uh, some of you. Well, but it's a hymn that exalts the holiness of God. 
And the Word of God teaches us once and again that if we want to have a life, a blessed life, a life that is happy, we need that God works that holiness in us because God has qualities also. God has qualities that are, uh, uh, it can be uh, passed to the human being and another ones cannot be passed to the human being. Some of the ones that can be passed like or the ones that cannot be passed is like uh, God uh, Almighty. God, that quality does not give it to the human being. So that's why in the word of God, in none, in any part, we believe that the Bible is the word of God from Genesis till Revelations. All scripture is inspired by God and in all scripture, we are not going to find at any moment for God to say to the believer, be almighty because I'm almighty. No, we are not going to find God saying to us, be omnipresent because I'm omnipresent. But we do find that he says, be holy for I am holy. Because there are qualities from God, characteristics from God, that he is the one that only has them. Like being almighty, be omnipresent, knowing everything. Also, the presence, uh, knowing everything, they are qualities of God that only God has them. Those are qualities that cannot be uh, given to the human being, but there are other qualities that can be given. Like, for example, love is a quality of God, attribute from God, and God can give his love to us, the goodness, the justice, but that quality of holiness is a quality that God gives to the human being, that God transfers to the believers because the word of God makes us holy, because the Holy Spirit that is holy also sanctifies us. Then I always say with 100% certainty and conviction that many times believers are looking for happiness. And I say that the believers, we have to be looking for holiness because happiness comes as consequence that I'm consecrated to God. Happiness, feel fullness of the Holy Spirit, the victorious life, the life of miracles, where God works in a mighty way in our lives comes as consequence that we are holy for him that we consecrate for him. God wants us to live in victory. God want us, wants the believers to live from triumph to triumph and from glory to glory. But for this to happen, we need the holiness of God. Consecrate our life for God. Consecrate all our being for God. All our life has to be uh, ruled and by untouched by the fire of the holiness of God. There we read in First Peter, God gives a reason to his people for them to be holy and say, do not be worried so much, but be holy for I am holy, for I am holy. And in chapter six of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter six, we find experience that this prophet had, Isaiah, that if you read the first chapters of Isaiah, you are going to find a prophet that lives saying who those or the other, who this one or the other, the first chapters of Isaiah, but when he has an experience face to face with the presence of God, when he has a vision of the majesty of God, of the glory of God, he changes his way of speaking. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 and ahead, it says, In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted. How tremendous. How is the throne of God is lofty and exalted. With the train of his rock filling the temple, seraphims stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. 
see what the word of God is saying here. What a what an extraordinary vision that the prophet Isaiah had that saw the throne of God and he was having a vision of the presence presence of God and around the throne of God there were a kind of angels that they had six wings and with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet and with two he flew i don't know if we can imagine this but i asked myself why would they cover their face they covered their face because they were in front of the holiness of god because those angels could not look so close the magnificent of the holiness of God. May God uh, want that each one of the believers in the whole world has, have, we have really a clear dimension that God is holy, 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 and that God is infinite, infinitely holy, and that he requires from his people what he said to that man, sanctify today because tomorrow I'm going to do wonders among you. And for sure, God also will say to us today, sanctify yourselves because I want to do wonders among you. And there it's, and the Bible says they had six wings and with two they flew and with two they covered um, their feet and with two they covered their own face. They could not look uh, to the holiness of God. They could not... Uh, Look, the magnificent of the holiness of God. Isaiah could have that experience. Verse 3 says, says, And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. See, that did not say, the angels were not saying, loving, loving, loving. Justice, justice, justice. That are qualities of God. They did not say, goodness, good, merciful, merciful. Those angels, when they repeated that quality of God, they only centered in one thing. And they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. When we speak about the holiness of God, there are two enemies that the holiness of God has among his people. One is legalism and the other one is too much freedom. I believe that there are uh, believers that are legalism and the other ones like freedom too much. None of them uh, participate of the uh, holiness of God because legalism tempts against the holiness of God and taking the freedom on your own also tempts against the holiness of God. God does not want nor of those two things. Be holy for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. I had an experience a few years ago. I liked to go once in a while in a congregation that uh, uh, was close by home uh, at a time that nobody was because I like to go to pray and be by myself. And once praying, I said, Lord, I believe that I have to keep uh, speaking all your word, all your advice. But I believe that I have to center in these last times in speaking about your holiness, about your Holy Spirit and doing your will. To speak about the, all the counsel of God, but centered in this. And few days after this, in that prayer, I was by myself in that church. There was anybody else. I closed the door. Nobody could listen to me praying. A few days afterwards, a few days later, came the one that was our pastor for many years there in Florida. And he says to me the following, preach 
all the counsel of God, but never stop saying, speaking about the holiness of God, about the Holy Spirit, and about doing the will of God. Never stop preaching about that. Because I understood, brethren, that while the more we consecrate it to God, while the more we live in the will of God, and the more we feel of the presence of God, we are going to be more happy here in earth. The holiness brings happiness. Sin brings sadness. Sin brings bitterness. Sin brings pain. Sin brings negative things. And the enemy is very clever because before sin, temptation, in temptation, he can show to us a pretend uh, to show us the momentaneous pleasure or temporary pleasure that sin has, but never the enemy shows the consequences of the sin. If not, we can see the life of Psalmist David, that even though he's a sweet singer of Israel, and even though he was a man according to the heart of God, we read the consequences that brought the sin that was not confessed in his life when he was for a year in silence, hiding the things that he did, He says that in that year, he, my, his uh, bones got older. My greenness became dry till I confessed my transgressions to God. When he confessed, he started to sanctify himself in the presence of God. And that brought a, a change in his life. This is why, brethren, What I was saying at the beginning, we are all called, some to preach, some to uh, teach, some to praise God, and other ones to teach the kids. But there is a calling that is general for all, that is the calling to be holy before God, to walk life consecrated before God, to look, seek the presence of God, that the word of God sanctify us when Jesus prayed in John 17 one of the things that he prayed he said sanctify them in your truth your word is the truth is the word of God that sanctify us is the word of is the spirit holy spirit that use the word of God to do great works I was speaking with Pastor Manolo that the reason by which we choose the congregation here even though we have many uh, congregations closer in the south, but I was speaking to Pastor Manolo and said that we choose this congregation because the word is the cent the word of God is the center because the center of the meetings is the word of God, is the teaching of the word of God. And not only the teaching, but it's also the sound doctrine, the good teaching of the word of God. Why? Because we understand, we believe that the Holy Spirit does not use other things but the word of God to convert the soul. He used the word of God for the persons to be born again. This is why Jesus, when he was speaking with Nicodemus, he said, if you are not born of water, that is the word that clean us from word and the spirit, you cannot see nor enter in the kingdom of God. It's the word of God that does that a person that is living in sin, far away from God, that has a dirty life, but when the person listens to the word of God, believes in the message, gets the message, that person can believe and convert. This is why it's so beautiful to preach the word, to teach the word. And Manolo was saying to me, the pastor, yes, here you are not going to see a lot of shows, nor those things, but you always, but always the sound doctrine and clear uh, teaching of the word is going to be here because the word sanctifies. The word of God has power, has power to heal. This is why the Bible says, but by the word, he cast out demons and healed the sick one, has power to convert the soul. The word of God has power to make wise the simple one. The word of God has power to sanctify the worst of all lives. This is why it's necessary that the word of God have the place in our life. Be holy is not to be a moralist. All of that has appearance of holiness, but it's not holiness. Then we say that is a quality of God, and it's a quality that he can communicate to us. There is a preacher that said God is a 
uh, God aparted uh, from creation in his holiness and he has aparted us uh, to be his sons. He is free from corruption and he's cleaning us from corruption. God is a God uh, that is aparted. To be holy is to be apart, put apart. God apart us for him. We were singing a song that uh, is, says you captivated, you you changed me with your calling. I give you my life, oh, blessed Potter. And in that calling that God made to us is with a calling to, a calling to holiness. We see in Exodus 15, Exodus 15, verse 1, verse 11, 15:11. Who is after uh, Israel crossed uh, the sea dry by the power of God, and from the other side, uh, after crossing uh, the sea, they started to praise God. And one of the sisters of the congregation of Israel uh, got an instrument and started to praise the Lord. And one of the things that they were saying in that praise. Exodus 15, verse 11 says, Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness? See what it's saying here, that God is majestic in holiness, that God is admirable in holiness, that God is really wonderful in his holiness. And it says, majestic in holiness. For sure, there is another translation that may say splendid in holiness, excellence in holiness, admirable in holiness. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness? What a beautiful expression the word of God uses to speak about him, that he is majestic in holiness, that he is majestic in holiness. We keep reading in verse 11 says, awesome in praises, working wonders. Awesome in praises, working wonders. That is our God. That is the God to whom we serve. A God that is holy, a God that does wonders, that makes miracles, that works in the preaching of his word, a God that sanctifies his people, and a God that wants to bless us. The will of God is to bless us. The will of God is to take us from triumph to triumph. The will of God is that our life be for him. Be for him. There is a word that all of us know about the holiness that says, uh, follow the peace with all. And the holiness without which nobody will see God. You see that God makes a relationship between uh, our relationship with the other and also with his holiness because he says, follow the peace with all, keep the peace with all, and the holiness without which nobody will see God. And I believe, brethren, that as it depends on us, we have to be in peace with all. If it depends on us, sometimes it's impossible, but if it, in all our sight, we have to be in peace with all and follow holiness, without which no one will see God, and without which uh, no one will see God in three senses. One of them, if that is, we don't live in holiness, we cannot reach uh, heaven, we cannot reach the presence of God. Without holiness, no one will see God. In that sense, without holiness, also in another sense, we won't be able to see the great wonders of God. And in another sense, without holiness, nobody will see God. If there is no holiness in us, a third one won't be able to see God. But if there is holiness in us, the neighbor will start to see God in us. We'll see God through our lives. Let's remember then, brethren, that 
The holiness is good. The word of God says in one of the Psalms, the holiness is good for your house. Do you remember that Psalm? I don't know if you have read it. It says, the holiness is good for your house. And the other day I was saying, God, if the holiness is good for your house, if you say in your word that the holiness is good for your house, I ask you, I tell you something, Lord, the holiness is also good for my own house. The holiness also is convenient for my house. If it is good for your house, also for mine. It's good that in our houses be an atmosphere of holiness. We, our son Ephraim, we have him well taught, and sometimes we let them, we let him see the uh, TV. And when he says something that knows it's not from God, he knows it's not from God. He comes and looks after us and say, "Change the TV channel because there is a demon in the TV." There are ugly things in the TV, and he knows, and he comes and tells us because we have created, as a family, an atmosphere of holiness in the house where you don't see anything, you don't listen to just anything when there are no bad words because, as we read at the beginning, be holy in all your behavior. Not only in the church, Thursdays and Sundays, be holy every day. All the time, be holy. And every, every place and all moment comes to my mind that ver verse that says, in all time, be your dress white. That in all time, be your uh, gowns white and never lack ointment over your head. If we want that the anointment of God be in us, if we want that the anointment to be in our lives, let our uh, garments be white. You know uh, the text that is in Matthew 21 when Jesus enters into the temple and he finds that there is people that is doing uh, anything inside the temple. I think Pastor Manolo was uh, speaking about that in a devotional when Jesus went into the temple because when you think about Jesus, you like to see that Jesus of Hollywood that is good the whole time, that is always uh, without reaction or not getting angry. But we find that Jesus goes into the temple and he finds that there are uh, doing business in the temple and there is people selling, buying, changing, lying to another one. And the word of God says that Jesus uh, hold on to some cords and he started to put the table down and he took everybody out and he said uh, you have uh, made the house of God a place of thieves but the house of God is a house of prayer and he purified the temple you see that Jesus purified the temple. And what happened after Jesus purified the temple? The word of God says that the blind ones came, the sick ones, the ones that needed, they entered into the temple and all of them were healed. Why? Because when God is manifested with his holiness, also it starts to happen miracles, healings, freedom, the power of God, powers, pours over the lives. And this is what happened in the temple. Before that, nothing happened. The blind were there, the paralytics, the ones with leprosy, they had the Bethesda pool so, uh, closed, but nothing happened. But when Jesus purified that temple and removed from that place, uh, from the temple of God, he took out all the uh, uh, business persons. Uh, the word of God says that the power of God was manifested, healing sick, healing sick people working in a mighty way. The Bible says that we are the temple of God. Our life, since we repent, from our sins since the moment that we give ourselves to the Lord with all our heart. From the moment that we were born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live in our life and we become His temple. We become His temple. 
And in the same way that Jesus purified that temple, also purifies our lives. And with the purification, the holiness, the sanctification comes the manifestation of the glory of God, comes the manifestation of the presence of God working in our hearts. This is why, brethren, be holy, for God is holy. God is a majesty in holiness. And with this, brethren, we end. I did not give this uh, text to the brethren uh, that puts the screen, but Psalm 93, 5 says, the holiness of God is good for your house. The holiness is convenient for your life, for my life. The holiness is convenient and is the best atmosphere in which we can live. The uh, holiness is the best atmosphere where we can raise our kids, is the best atmosphere where our family can be. Because in an atmosphere of holiness is an atmosphere that is good for the manifestation of the power of God. Let's sanctify our life every day more. Let's be consecrated for our God every day more, and we are going to see his power working in our hearts. Let's stand up to pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your word. We honor you. We bless you. To you, we give all the glory, the honor, the praise. Lord, and we declare that you are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Lord, you are holy. And we ask you that you sanctify your people, sanctify every day our lives, consecrate every day more our lives for you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, my God, we give you thanks for your word that we have shared this evening, Lord where we ask you that your word be in our hearts, that your word, Lord, find a place in our lives, not only the ones that we are here, but the ones that are in other countries looking through internet. Sanctify your people. Call us every day more to holiness, God, to be consecrated for you, Lord, to seek your presence. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. And we ask you, that you help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father. Help us, Holy Spirit, to live a life consecrated in the midst of a world that is with more sin, in the midst of a world where the darkness are advancing. But your word says that the darkness will cover the earth, but and darkness the nations, but over you God will rise and his glory will be seen. Lord, and in the midst of so much perversity, in the midst of so much sin, my God, your people be firm in the truth of your word, in the truth of that word that sanctifies us, that clean us, that purify us. Holy Spirit of God, fill our lives with your anointing. Fill our life with your holiness, with your pr glorious presence, and do wonderful things and mighty things among us. Do miracles, healings, freedom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, work, Father, work, my God, in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks for your word, Lord and fire and light our uh, lives, the fire of your holiness, uh, put in our lives the fire of your holiness. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, God, we want to be consecrated every day more for you. We want to seek your holiness every day more and to be surprised and in your presence say, Holy, 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 Lord Almighty, God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. Lord, we praise your name and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, we give you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. May God keep blessing you, brethren. Many thanks. Thank you, brother.
Amen, brethren. Are you thankful to God? I believe that it has been a subject that is a blessing, the holiness, uh, not in the, only in the personal life, but also has to be seen in matrimonies, in household, in our children. We are responsible, we as parents, of teaching uh, our children and for them to grow in that holiness, for them to know what is good and what is bad. Amen? Amen. 